to start. Okay. Well, um, it's been a thing with the organization and the monitor yeah. at, the, at the door not being updated, but well, no worries. Here we go. Nevertheless. Again. 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 <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're really happy to be here. My name is Alejandro Comisario. I'm the technical lead of cloud services at MercadoLibre.com. And I'm here with Leandro Reos, who's also a technical lead of several projects at cloud services at Mercado Libre also. So we're here today to tell you a little story about how we scale today our picture solution using OpenStack Swift. Um, but for those you don't know Mercado Libre, um, let's talk about, about it a little bit. Um, Mercado Libre is an Argentinian company. Uh, it's based in Buenos Aires. It's the e-commerce e uh, platform leader in Latin America, having presence over 14 countries, including Portugal and Europe. Uh, we are in the eighth position of the online world retailers. 1,900 employees work in Mercado Libre, where 400 are related with IT. Uh, plus 90 million users are registered uh, today in our platform. Uh, since our API went public for all the developers to uh, develop their applications around Mercado Libre's API, we're hitting 5 million API requests per minute. Regarding throughput and bandwidth, uh, we are handling 4 gigabit uh, per second incoming from our users, and our more than 8,000 virtual instances are running in over 1,300 uh, physical servers. So uh, I'm going to give you Leandro to start talking a little bit about our previous solution and why we couldn't scale pretty well. Uh, well, so yeah, you might say that what a nice testing lab you had there, guys, uh, it's so big, what a nice QA environment, but actually, um, no. The Aid Online World Retailer is actually running inside full on top of OpenStack. We actually build our services around <laughs> OpenStack. We build Memcache as a service, database as a service, queuing as a service, it's all on all of, top of OpenStack. And we are using the whole stack. We're using Cinder, we're using Neutron, we're using Nova, of course we're using Swift, and we wanted to talk about that. And we're actually planning to actually release our first version of our platform as a service by the end of this year using Nova plus Docker IO containers. That's really cool, and actually replacing our auto-scaling custom API with him and Sailometer staff. So we're doing actually pretty cool stuff. That is not bad for us. We are pretty proud, proud about it. So let's talk a little bit of our previous solution and what happened before, uh, why our previous storage solution didn't scale right for us. So let's talk a little bit about what happened. So storing billions of billions of images on an FS storage and our old NFS appliances didn't scale right for us. So actually due to performance issues, um, because our previous platform didn't have the ability actually to scale up and out so well, and didn't have the ability to actually add more CPU units or more processing power to it. So we ended up <laughs> with a lot of available storage, but no processing power at all. So we were locked the hard way, and we needed to actually get a way to deal with this problem. We actually started to shard across several NFS clusters and trying to solve that thing by that way, but it didn't work either. So we were hitting a lot of bottlenecks or our current infrastructure. Actually, when you try to access an uncache, when we try to access an uncache object, for example, to look up for an image, uh, actually, every single read implies a one database query. So when the caching layer, when we have a problem on the caching layer, for example, and the database can keep up with it. So this causes downtimes of, of course, uh, reduce our annual bonus, and that's sad. That's really sad. So we needed to actually do a thing to actually improve this. Actually, we have a layer of proxy servers that do all the online scaling stuff uh, for the users to upload a picture and scale the thumbnail online, but 
that layer didn't scale right pretty well, so when that layer went down, actually the whole site crashes and you cannot see images. We are an e-commerce platform, we sell stuff, so actually the images are core of our business, so need to be available all the time. So actually we can, oh, cool, nice. So actually we can handle traffic peaks. And what about scaling the caching layer? We have a big varnish caching layer on top of our CDN, CDN, uh, CDN sorry. Um, if you want to scale up the layer, actually the re when rehashing happens, uh, that implies a lot of backend hits. But actually, as I tell you previously, our solution wasn't able to actually handle traffic peaks. So we have to do it in the, in the morning at uh, 3 a.m. to do that stuff. It took a lot of time and implies downtime and it wasn't cool enough. So we were able to follow business needs and implementing other formats or upgrading, for example, uh, an image format or adding an HD image to the platform were actually unthinkable. So, oh, yeah. So actually, why we choose Swift? Imagine that to picture this for you guys, um, the images were previously there, so uh, you can even see the guy back there who's administering the platform. So. Um, we wanted to deploy an open source platform, an open source op offshore storage platform that actually fixed this issue that we were having previously. So why would you Swift? There's a lot of reason to it, but we're going to see a couple. Um, because it's open source, yeah. So we love open source, we are hacker, we love to hack, we love to do things, we love to contribute to so open source. It's a very great reason to us. You can run it anywhere. I don't know if you guys know that back in South America where fridges are built on top of open compute standards. So I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm talking about commodity hardware. And that leads us to the most selling phrase of the last couple of years, you know bundle locking. So it's durable and it's as granular as you want. So actually you can actually control all your availability by soon in the smart way. You can distribute all your zones, across your racks, across your data center, across anywhere. So you can actually manage that. And it's multi-tenancy. You have to publish just one endpoint. And any, any user on your company can actually use the solution. It's pretty cool. If you integrate that with Keystone, well, that's a killing combo. And you don't, guys don't need me to tell you that actually Swift scales. You just need that proxies for processing or throughput power, and you need to add just a storage node for a storage and sharding and all the stuff. So, actually, to make, to make it clear for you guys, when you access Mercado Libre, and we are in commerce platform, when you access Mercado Libre, all the images that you see in the items, all the CSS files, all the GS files that compose all, this, all the style from the site, actually are loaded from Swift. And you actually don't need a big, a big team to administer. You need just a couple of handsome guys like us just to administer. Oh, if you don't, if you are, you're in an IT-related company or you don't want or don't have that team, you can actually, I, we think that the stay way to Swift heaven is actually Swift that. So you can actually hit Swift that guide for it to get it that for you. Single point, single point of failure, so let's not talk about it because using a shared nothing approach, uh, actually every piece of the Swift infrastructure is transparently independent from each other. That means that every part of the solution actually knows everything about everyone. So that is what actually allows you to scale limitless. Um, having a REST API for us is great because that allows you to make sure that we're always speaking the same language and making the data flow through the exact same protocol. Talking about developers, well, uh, developers talk to HTTP, REST, uh, the whole day, and I'm sure they can choose any language they want to build uh, their Swift clients around it. Yeah. Um, highly secure, of course, because Swift by default is integrated with Keystone, so every call into the solution actually gets authenticated and authorized by the identity service. So you can assure, among other things, multi-tenancy, but if you want to make specific content public, you can do it through specific ACLs. 
If you want to scale to the skies the throughput and the bandwidth of your implementation, you can definitely, that is our use case, in, uh, implement Swift in-house to take uh, total control over it. And uh, of course, um, there is a huge and a vast community behind Swift. You can shoot the IRC, uh, you can shoot Launchpad, you can shoot the email list, and you're going to bump that with lots of uh, amazing people from Swift Stack and Rackspace that they're going to get for sure the right answer for you. Yeah. So, yeah, there was Swift, there was a real option, there was Swift to save the day, I think. Um, yeah, actually, save the day, uh, our jobs, and our annual bonus. See? <laughs> There you go. The yeah, yeah, I love, I love to say that. That, that was clear. Um, we 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 taste well, we taste Swift. We we were using for being a while, and we're using it a lot, and we like it. We love it. Uh, we implement Swift in a way that is called multi-disk configuration. Actually, it's a pretty weird configuration. Uh, one disk actually one maps to one port and one service, for example, an object server, and actually every single disk has its own configuration file. So if you want to tune something up in a particular disk, uh, you can actually do it. And that's pretty cool stuff. So um, yeah, I can, I can remember kernel parameters, but I always forget that number. So we have 1.2 petabytes actually in our Swift cluster, uh, 416 terabytes neat with three copies. This is, this is our, our half cluster of, uh, of current implementation. We have 255 terabyte needs, actually a bay level, and we have more than 1.4 billions of pictures actually uploaded into the solution. And we are adding more than 13 millions of images to Swift per day. Per day, that's a lot. That's a lot of small files, guys. Imagine that actually the average size of a picture in Mercado Libre is about 20K, and we're actually just using 60 gigs of, of, of the current. 60 terabytes. 60 terabytes, sorry, of the, of the current storage space. So there's a lot of math files. We have fast clients. And OK, um, it's, it's, it's hard to scale. If, if you want to scale, what well, about it? The good thing about Swift is actually it scales linearly. So if you want to scale your throughput and your bandwidth, you can add uh, more proxies into the solution. And if you want to scale your storage capacity, you need to add more data nodes little by little, little but not having to worry about performance degradations. Um, we are 10x faster than before. I mean, thinking about an open source and no cost solution that actually allowed us for every picture in a specific item to be loaded. And when it's loaded to uh, in real time process, there are uh, 20 versions of the same picture yeah. to show in different kind of devices and different kind of version, different kind of browsers, and to be uploaded. It's just one single operation without any, not having to wait even minutes. It was a dream, and today, thanks for the ability to, for Swift to handle that much throughput, is today pretty easily for us. And talking about saving hardware and, and lowering cost. Imagine uh, static content being shown by the side, not only the pictures. Imagine configuration files. Imagine in their internal data structure that it has to be uh, shared among internal applications. Well, um, give those applications a couple of web servers and multiply it by the amount of uh, departments and projects inside your company. And that's the exact amount of hardware that we saved storing all this static content into one separate uh, Swift cluster. Yeah. So that is uh, absolutely huge for us. Um, again, having this rock solid implementation of an object storage and having total control over it gives you the tools to leverage the right solution, take control about anything, and not having impact on the business at all. So yeah, maybe you're still scared. So you're asking if Swift is strong enough, is mature enough to store all your company stuff. Um, we're here actually to scream in and loud that actually Swift is core of our business. We are actually an e-commerce platform and we sell things through images and all the images are stored in Swift. 
So actually, you don't have reasons to be afraid because Swift is strong, it's a strong solution. It's a real cool solution. But we have a couple of tips for you that we gather from great guys like Craig on the IRC and the Swift Tag people. And of course, if you didn't get yet the Joe, the Joe book, so you should get it. So use always enterprise grace drive for your SATA drives and for your SSD drives. Um, you're gonna gain a lot and you don't have to be struggling with all the DC if you have remote support, calling all the time and saying to the guys, oh, replace that, replace that, replace that. Um, that that's not cool at all. Um, use a dedicated high-speed network. Um, we use it mostly for replication because we are throughput guys. We are bandwidth guys. But if you actually are bandwidth guys, so um, maybe you need to implement a high-speed network uh, to the data nodes from the proxies and so on. Yeah, use SSD for uh, count and containers. This is actually a pretty important tip. Uh, we, we notice a major gain switching SATA drive on a count and containers to SSD drive because of the nature of the service. You're actually hitting an SQLite database that needs to actually uh, really, really high speed for concurrency. And of course, haste makes waste, guys, Festina Lente. If you need to add or remove resources from Swift, add disk, remove disk, do it slowly. Sometimes slow is better. If you don't want to actually harm or make a performance impact on your platform in a current Swift cluster, do it slowly. And that's a, actually a, a great tip. So in our specific case, our old production internal network is dominated 100% for fast client. That means Lots of application craving for this thousand of get and put operation that got against our Swift cluster. So imagine you hit the perfect setup uh, in, in, our, in this specific case. So in our case, we found out that stripping all in the same account, stripping all your throughput, again, several containers actually uh, allows you to scale your throughput to the skies. Talking about smart zoning, I mean, this is a thoughtful initial uh, uh, setup that you need to think really well when you're deploying Swift. Yeah. You need to really think about where your data nodes are going to be placed inside your data center. You need to uh, really be really thoughtful about how your zones are going to be configured in a way that you can handle a uh, disaster situation. Talking about recycle, I mean, uh, at least in our use case, if you have data that you're not going to need in your cluster, you're not going to need on the several weeks, on the several months, and the several years, please delete it because by that you free an inode, then an inode freed on a disk, on a data node, it's actually an inode that doesn't need to be caching RAM. So talking about caching also, uh, make sure that everything that has to be cached is actually there. Take a trip against your memcache and your proxy nodes, and do take a little queries and make sure that everything's there. But on the other hand, make sure that you know exactly what you need to be cached from the proxies and 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 before. So uh, there is a specific uh, there is a specific point that we wanted to really uh, really make notice of. So checking uh, your setup for Go services. Well, if you have a specific disk that is always kissing the upper line of uh, specific monitoring. Uh, in your company, or you have weird IL peaks during specific times in the day, well, uh, just take a good cup of coffee and go through all your uh, configurations about background services, replication, auditors, etc., and make sure you have everything pretty well configured, because let me know that in Swift, everything has an explanation, thank yeah. God. And the last point, but not least, and since we think you, we got your attention, we wanted to leave it for the, for the last, is make sure you really understand what Swift is made for. Make sure that Swift has a use case and your company understand the technological and economics implication of using Swift inside your company. And if you do, you just have to deploy it. You just have to configure it, monitor it, shoot to the IRC if you're something lacking, and then you can drink tea like a salt served the whole day. So, um, well, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we really enjoyed uh, yeah. our talk. We and if you have 
any doubts uh, about our setup or specific deep dive uh, technical implementation, we were the one that made it happen. So, and actually, um, we want to encourage anyone to use this platform. Um, we're using big time, and it's really great. And actually, if we did it, actually anyone can do it. So, yeah. So, thank you very much.